Vision TV is Canada's multi-faith and multicultural channel. It's available on basic cable and satellite in about 10 million homes across the country. But here's the problem. Soon, Vision TV might be hard to find on your TV or not available at all. Vision, of course, is part of the Zoomer family. Our founder and guiding light, Moses Neimer, joins me in the studio to talk about it. Moses, great to see you. Hey, Goldock. What's happening here, and what do we need to know about this situation that seems fairly dire for Vision TV? What's happening is that Vision was licensed 25 years ago. The CRTC, the regulator of broadcasting in Canada, had a good idea at the time. It was faced by applications from single faith organizations who wanted to take advantage of the teaching power of television to reach their communities and send out their message. Uh, they granted this service the privilege of basic carriage. That meant that it would be available in every home that was attached either to cable or to satellite. Um, and with the expiry of these basic carriage rules, the people who own the hardware and most of the software are now in a position to move us around or take us off for all matter of reasons, uh, willful or otherwise. They just have the power to do that. Well, they have their own stuff that they would want to put there. Well, in, exactly, in, 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 because basic is very good real estate. Uh, Vision is also the least expensive, most efficient service um, really on yeah. television because Vision actually only gets, regardless of what people are charged, 12 cents for each subscriber a month. So it costs uh, less than a buck and a half a year yeah. to have Vision. So the packages under this system, would we would no longer be on basic cable, as it were, should this happen. Right. And we would wind up somewhere else on some other package or would in, we, in, in a could we disappear altogether? We could because according to this new incarnation of the rules, the operators involved could do what they wanted with us. Literally. Take it or not take it, for and, example. And that's a hell of an uncomfortable way in which to live. Yeah. So uh, where we find ourselves today is that we are attempting to negotiate renewals of our contracts with the various carriers and generally speaking they've been elusive. And they've been elusive because the matter is not quite settled. Uh, there's one faint hope clause in the Broadcasting Act, and uh, it, it goes by these uh, bureaucratic initials, 91H. It's clause 91H. And it allows the regulator to issue what's called a mandatory order to tell the distributors, uh, the cable operators, the satellite operators, that they must continue to carry such and such a service on basic. Right. And the commission has actually deployed this particular weapon in its arsenal um, in favor of things that have high ideological value, high importance and symbolic value for the Canadian system. Right. And what we're saying to the commission is uh, we've been there for 25 years. This is a profound habit and an important mission. This is the place where the religions and the races can meet. And it would be a terrible thing, a kind of unnecessary piece of vandalism, really, for this to be removed, especially at a time when the need is greater than ever, when the cost is, as I say, negligible, de minimis, uh, and more and more Canadians are actually rallying to the service. Um, the nuance that we've added, which is also a new factor in the broadcasting system, is that the Commission over the years has been very sensitive to all kinds of minorities, linguistic minorities, religious minorities, racial minorities. But it has neglected to notice that the biggest underrepresented minority of all are the Canadians who are aging that this sudden manifestation of some 40 percent of the population or con completely ignored by popular culture and because commercial operators, you know, chase advertising, which is targeted at 18 to 34s and 25 to 54s, generally speaking, there is not another service that not only attracts older viewers, but speaks to them and ultimately for them. That's 
the mission of our organization, and vision is a hugely important instrument in that fight. But, but let, let me try to complicate it further sure, so I please. can understand it and people can understand it. Yeah. So the, the CRTC, in the best possible terms for vision, would issue this mandatory order to make the, the service mandated across the country, but what as to position? Those are two different things, aren't they? Uh, there's a million Vast. ways in which we can be both helped and hurt by a distributor. Yeah. A distributor who likes a service and thinks they can make a lot of money off a service will market the service on their own. They will give it a more favorable channel position. Uh, but we're talking about an even more drastic way in which a distributor can uh, hurt us, which is to say they can either remove us or they can put us into different packages which could reduce our access to the public by an infinite amount, literally. It could go down to half as much. It could go down to mm -hmm. 10% as much. Assume for a moment um, that the CRTC mandates the service, that it would be carried, that, right. that carriers do have to carry it, yeah. but is there any tool the CRTC can use to say, keep it where it is now? There doesn't seem to be any uh, any way for the CRTC to do that under this uh, new way of looking at well, things. Well, that's right. It was a, There was a time when the commission would indicate that uh, you had to keep a channel, say, in the first 30 placements. Right. Uh, generally, that regime has faded away. And as I say, uh, all of this kind of drive to deregulation in the name of the market uh, always pretends that people behave rationally. They make the best decisions for their community and their customers. And we know that's not true. Mm -hmm. We know that people behave uh, per preemptively. They can behave vindictively. There, there may be an executive of the BDU listening right now as we're speaking, thinking, I'll get that guy, right? <laughs> I'll teach him. Uh, because we're really at their mercy. Um, yeah. And, and uh, the commission, having retracted this privilege, now has the ability to at least reassert it. And the whole Zoomer enterprise is not an easy pathway to riches. You know, we're, we're in it for a mission. We have an important statement that we're making in society. You know, we're aligned with CARP, which is the advocacy that looks after seniors and, and Canadians as we age. Uh, all of society is grappling with this new phenomenon of longevity. Uh, we're at the heart of that discussion. And, and we're also at the heart of a new medium by which people who want to talk to this community, this neglected community, can do so efficiently because they have vision, they've got this radio station, they've got our magazine. It's all of a piece uh, to have the vision television channel abruptly remove at the base of this, uh, uh, as it were, triangle of, uh, of access uh, would be a disaster. All that's really required then for Vision TV is for every, is for Vision TV to be left alone. That's all we want. Hands off Vision Hands TV. Off, by please. the way, Vision TV has not had an increase, not a penny's increase in eight years. I don't know of any other service on the planet, certainly none that belong to these cable and satellite. They're called BDUs, Broadcast Distribution Undertakings, and they're called VI in the business. They're vertically integrated. This is a new phenomenon, and there are yeah. voices out there that say this deregulation and concentration now has gone too far, and what started out as a gesture in favor of consumer sovereignty is now going to damage the consumers because they're going to have channels that they're used to removed and other channels that belong to these distributors yeah. shoved down their throat. There are going to be a lot of Zoomers out there who are going to be very concerned about this and will want well, to do what so. they can. Yes. What can they do? They can tell their MP how they feel because this is in some ways an important political issue. And if they are uh, deeply engaged with their own faith group, they really should be speaking to their local faith uh, minister, priest, uh, imam, uh, and, and getting them engaged because we have been an important vehicle this year to some 90 different faith groups who could in no other way get their story out to the Canadian public 
on a national basis at a reasonable price. There would, there's simply no other medium of doing it. Moses, thanks very much for explaining this to us. We all have our fingers crossed. Thanks. All right. Moses Neimer, our founder and guiding light on the uh, future of Vision TV and the fight that lies ahead. This is Gold Hawk Fights back for you on Zoomer Radio. <laughs> 